For years, El Chapo built his empire in relative obscurity, killing competitors, cutting deals, and bringing tons of drugs into the U.S. Then, one day in May of 1993, all that changed. Here at the airport in Guadalajara, Mexico, a flurry of bullets killed seven people, including the Cardinal Juan Jesus Posada Olcampo. El Chapo was at the airport that day. Who really killed the Cardinal is still unknown, but many originally believed the Cardinal was assassinated by El Chapo. Es hasta después del asesinato del Cardinal Posadas cuando las autoridades nos empiezan a decir que hay grandes capos. Y entonces nos dicen que uno se llama Joaquín Guzmán Loera, alias El Chapo Guzmán. For the first time, Mexico learned that it had its own drug lords, and one of them was Chapo Guzmán. Soon, authorities said that El Chapo was actually the intended victim. The cardinal was merely caught in the crossfire. Still, he became the most wanted man in Mexico. It was the beginning of the legend of El Chapo. Using his money and influence, he miraculously slipped away by crossing the border to Guatemala. Then, on June 9th, he was quietly captured by the chief of intelligence of that country. Íbamos con toda la seguridad necesaria para poder responder, precisamente pensando en que pudiera haber algún grupo que lo tratara de rescatar. Today, Otto Pérez is the president of Guatemala. For 20 years, he never spoke about the capture. He feared for his family's safety. Mi familia, mi hija especialmente, tuvo una cuestión que nos pareció muy rara en su momento a, a nosotros y se bajaron cuatro personas armadas con fusiles y le empezaron a disparar. Ya vio todavía cuando uno levantó el fusil, se, se hizo a un lado y, y puso el acelerador. Ella recibió eh, tres impactos en, en, en su cuerpo. Gracias a Dios logró, no perdió el conocimiento. Y pudo, el, el vehículo tenía 50, 50 disparos de fusil. I had an interview with the president of Guatemala, and he said that he suspected that El Chapo Guzmán was behind an attempt to kill his daughter in Guatemala. El Chapo offered Perez a deal. If he let him go, Chapo would give Perez millions of dollars and tell him where to intercept five tons of cocaine. So the first thing El Chapo tries to do when he's captured is to bribe this guy. I have one million, two million. I can give you a shipment that I'm preparing to send to the United States in El Salvador, five tons of cocaine. Perez turned the bribe down. So they say no, and, and they report the, the shipment and take him to, to uh, Mexico. With his hands and feet tied, Guzman was turned over to Mexican authorities. Then, during the flight back to Mexico, El Chapo decided he had something very important to say. He said, I want to give an statement. So he called one of the offers to take note. And he mentioned all the names of officials from Mexico and Guatemala that he has bribed in the years before. One copy of the document that remained was handed over to Mexican prosecutors. In ese documento, pues, hay un informe de cómo fue aquello, el interrogatorio, tal, 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 tal. Y hace una denuncia o transmite una denuncia del Chapo de que le daba algún dinero a alguien que había sido su procurador. That paper, that document that was prepared by this official was lost. It's a common theme. Anything that has to do with El Chapo, papers seem to disappear. <laughs> It happened with the investigation of the Cardinal. Over, I think, a thousand documents went missing. Nobody seems to know what happened to them. So it seems that wherever he's involved, things get lost, mysteriously get lost. And I guess is a lot of people, it's in their best interest that he never get caught. Ironically, the only time El Chapo was arrested was over a crime he didn't commit. El Chapo was first sent to a strict penitentiary, where he couldn't even talk to other inmates. He complained and got moved to the Puente Grande prison in Jalisco. With bribes and intimidation, he turned the jail 
into a five-star hotel full of special privileges. Le permitía la entrada de prostitutas, le permitía la entrada de Viagra, porque el Chapo Guzmán consumía Viagra, cocaína, y, este, y le permitían, no solo eso, le permitían también tener acceso sexual a eh, reclusas que estaban ahí. One of them, Zulema Hernández, became his girlfriend. And in one of the many love letters El Chapo sent her, he told her that after eight years behind bars, he would soon be free again. Were there other prison officials or guards that were aware of this and allowed this to happen because they were paid bribes or intimidated in some way? It seems unlikely that he just got into a, <laughs> a dirty clothespin <laughs> and got rolled out of the prison without a fair number of people having been paid off to help him escape. And to this day, he still eludes those trying to capture him. Two crews in Guadalajara. Uh -huh. When Univision News managing editor Maria Martinez Enao went back to Guadalajara to report for this program, she was reminded of El Chapo's far reaching influence. So I'm in Guadalajara with two crews. One was working on some other story, had to do with drug trafficking, in which a Puerto Rican national was in a jail. So I'm interviewing his lawyer. And the lawyer says to me, you haven't been honest, have you? To me, and I said, I'm sorry? Honest about what? Why do you have a crew in the Guadalajara airport investigating El Chapo? And I said, oh, well, we're working on a Chapo special. How are you, are you one of El Chapo's lawyers? And he said, I'm his friend. Once again, El Chapo had eyes and ears everywhere. When we come back, how the world's most powerful drug lord evaded capture, and a surprising connection El Chapo has to the United States. <laughs> 